Hello and welcome to Clavio News Decks. We are reaching you live from Nigeria's capital city, Abuja. I am Imefon Okun. Nollywood actor Bart Adebole says he does not want to marry a virgin because the first experience can be traumatic for men. The actor shed light on the male experience in such situations, highlighting the emotional toll it can take on a man. He added that when people think about it, they only think about the lady, obviously because she is the one that has to go through it but nobody thinks about the guy and what he goes through to do it. It is a very terrible experience for a guy. Adebole emphasized the importance of considering both perspectives in discussions about virginity. He went on to express empathy, acknowledging that while the focus is usually on the women's experience, the emotional and psychological impact on the men during such moments is often disregarded. He asserted that even though he won't take a virgin as a pride, he agrees that the discipline is something to be proud of. The Supreme Court of Nigeria has upheld the election of Amadou Fintry as the governor of Adamawa State, putting to rest the controversy that has surrounded the polls. Justice John Okoro, who read the lead judgment this Wednesday, dismissed the appeal filed by the governorship candidate of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Asha Dahiru, popularly known as Binani. The five-member panel led by Justice Okoro held that the appeal lacked merit and that the resident electoral commission, Audu Ari, had acted irresponsibly and criminally by not allowing the returning officer to announce the result. Justice Okoro further emphasized that it was the duty of the returning officer to announce the result to prevent chaos and anarchy. The chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Ola Olukayade, has revealed that the anti-craft agency uncovered how a religious sect in Nigeria is laundering money for terrorists. The EFCC boss also revealed that another religious body was found to be protecting a money launderer after some money suspected to have been laundered was traced to the organization's bank account. Speaking during a public engagement on youth, religion, and the fight against corruption, as well as the launch of the Fraud Rick's assessment project for ministries, departments, and agencies, Olukaya stated that the anti-craft agency was investigating a 13 billion naira fraud case when it discovered that 7 billion naira of the 13 billion was linked to a religious body's bank account. The one-day event is aimed at addressing the challenges of youth involvement in cyber crimes and how religion could be used as a weapon for their reorientation. 20 years after the enactment of the Pension Reform Act 2004, 26 states of the Federation have failed to fully implement the Contributory Pension Scheme. A report from the National Pension Commission shows that while some states are partially implementing the scheme, others are yet to join, just as others have the bill to domesticate the scheme stock at their respective state legislative assemblies. The Pension Re Reform Act 2004 introduced the Contributory Pension Scheme for payment of retirement benefits of employees in both public and private sectors, which is being managed by the National Pension Commission. The Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security, in collaboration with the National Gender Steering Committee for the Implementation of the National Gender Policy on Agriculture, have organized a one-day workshop on charting a roadmap of wider synergy for the implementation of gender policy in the agriculture sector. The Minister of Agriculture and Food Security, Senator Abubakar Kiari, in a message to education said in the 21st century, agriculture remains fundamental to economic growth, poverty reduction, and environmental sustainability in line with the diversification of the economy. Hence, the need to ensure gender gap is bridged to improve food security in the country. Clave Unis correspondent was there, and I'm tells us more. The minister, who was represented by the director of Human Resource Management, Federal Minister of Agriculture and Food Security, Oluwa Tony Alade, said, there is a renewed hope for food security in Nigeria, and this can only be possible when the right things are done. Alade said in line with the Sustainable Development Goals Declaration, gender parity is a requirement for eradicating poverty and promoting sustainable human development and by extension, food security for everyone. She also added that the Minister of Agriculture is committed to the socio-economic empowerment of women and men 
in the sector. In many parts of the world, including Nigeria, women are gatekeepers, but their roles remain largely unrecognized. Hence, with the implementation of the policy document, I have no doubt there will be a positive outcome in bridging gender gap, empowering women, and enhancing food security. I therefore call on all stakeholders in the agricultural sector to support the implementation of the policy, most importantly, at the state level where these farmers are based. Other stakeholders at the workshop said gender policy in agriculture, if implemented, will help reduce vulnerability of women and biases in agriculture sector. No nation can address the huge challenges women face in agriculture without a budgetary provision. We need to ensure that we put our money where our mouth is by ensuring that budgets align with the needs of both men and women. We are therefore committed to actively engaging in discussions and collaborating with fellow stakeholders from other states of the Federation to address the challenges and opportunities related to gender disparities in agriculture. The community of practice is actually a platform for all of us to continue to engage, to take stock of what is happening, so that by next year, by God's grace, when we come back together, we will be testified of how far we've implemented the policy together. What we are trying to get is to see that whatever the government gives out, either at the national or the state level, is given to women as well, just as it is also given to the men. So the national um, policy, if it is fully implemented, is really going to assist the women farmers because all the challenges that we have, talking about inavailability of farming inputs, talking about grants, talking about any other thing you think as far as farming is concerned, that is usually given as an assistant to farmers, doesn't go to women as it goes to the men. So the national gender policy is talking about equity, equal distribution to according to the number of, I mean, according to the number of farmers. So definitely it is going to improve our productivity. The national gender policy in agriculture is in line with the sustainable development goals that seeks to eradicate poverty, end hunger by achieving food security, improve nutrition, and sustainable agriculture, SDG2. Imefon Okun reporting for Clevy News. In line with its vision for an African society with strategic leadership and sustainable development, the African Center for Leadership, Strategy and Development this Wednesday organized a one-day strategy and validation meeting for stakeholders in Abuja, the nation's capital. The meeting is aimed at providing a platform for stakeholders to draw up a blueprint to guide its operations over the next four years. The work done by the center is dictated by its strategies and the strategic plan serves as a guiding blueprint for the center. It outlines the goals, actions, and trajectory over a specific period, which in this case is five years. It provides a structured framework for decision making, helping align resources and efforts towards achieving defined objectives. The strategy plan is also essential for navigating challenges, seizing opportunities, and ensuring the overall success and sustainability of our organization. The inaugural plan covered the period 2013 to 2017, while the successor plan spanned from 2019 to 2023. At the expiration of the previous, the leadership and management of Center LSD recognized the need for a new strategy plan to serve as a guiding compass for its actions. The current iteration was meticulously crafted taking into consideration both the external and internal environments within which Center LSD operates. It, involves, it, it involved a thorough analysis of the organization's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. But we are aware that the process is not complete without stakeholders' validation. It is for this reason we are here gathered today. Center LSD that 
has a modest or has modestly been contributed to the processes of leadership, strategic policy, and development in Nigeria. To this extent, we believe that this strategic uh, policy, uh, it's open because what we do is in public interest. And so for us to validate that which we do in public interest, we also want to have a public contribution that will strengthen the outcome of what we are doing. So to this extent, uh, the, the plan, like the AED has said, has built into the strength of the, of the uh, center over the years, and we plan to deepen it through, this, uh, through the next four years. We have also identified our weaknesses, which are also entrenched largely in the operating environment, and also have planned around how we also overcome some of the challenges through the weaknesses and also to identify those opportunities that are also inherent in the operating environment. The Africa Cup of Nations Afghan Côte d'Ivoire 2023 round of 16 features were concluded on Tuesday, paving the way for thrilling quarterfinal clashes. Eight teams advanced to the quarterfinal stage the matches played in the round of 16 were close contest, but the best teams made their way to their quarterfinals. Angola qualified after battling to a 3-0 win over Namibia on Saturday to meet Nigeria in the quarterfinal stage. DR Congo secured a slim victory against Ekriti Egypt on January 28, winning the game via penalty shootout 8-7 after a dramatic 1-1 draw in regular time. They are now set to battle Guinea. Other intriguing match-ups include Monday's encounter, which saw a late penalty that sent Cape Verde through 1-0 against Mauritania. They are now to miss South Africa, host Côte d'Ivoire, caught through the quarterfinals after an intense penalty shootout 5-4 against defending champion Senegal after battling out a 1-1 draw in regular time. On Tuesday, in the last round of 16 tie, Mali Bondo out opponent Burkina Faso 2-1 to book a place in the quarterfinal stage to face host Côte d'Ivoire. If you are just joining us, you are watching the news on Clavy News Dex. Never participate in a worry situation. Shoot an injection of faith into all your conversations. We'll be back after this break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Israel's army has begun flooding a mass network of tunnels as intense fighting rages in Gaza, UN warning of the potential collapse of the humanitarian system in the territory after a funding raw hit its Palestinian aid agency. The epicenter of the fighting in recent weeks has been in southern Gaza's main city, where vast areas have been reduced to a muddy west land, land of bombed out buildings. Elsewhere in the East City, Israeli troops gave journalists as a tour of a tunnel they said had been used as a mass command center. About 250 foreign and Israeli hostages were also dragged to Gaza during the October 7 attack, of whom around 132 are still there. That figure includes the bodies of at least 28 people believed to have been killed. You can follow up on latest events and happenings around you via social media platforms on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Clayview News Dex or via Ando on X, formerly known as Twitter at Clayview Online. Many thanks for watching. I am Imefono Kuhn.